Hey guys, how are you all doing? It's been a while since we talked, kind of uh, feeling like it's been already made, perhaps even too much time. But actually this whole um, uh, basically problem that the, the world facing right now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not, I'm not allowed to say uh, the, the, the name of the... Uh, uh, <laughs> the illness that is being spread uh, in uh, because youtube might uh, demonetize the video if you do that so uh, i'll be calling it by the code name rona that's what i think i've seen other youtubers do that um so if you want to skip the whole what's going on with my life right now and how am i doing you can just skip skip probably a couple of uh, minutes into the video uh, just to um, uh, to watch me uh, uh, play some play the game that I'll start soon. Um, so uh, just uh, want to let you guys know that uh, I'm I'm okay. I hope everything uh, everyone watching this video is also um, well and is not being in any kind of uh, quarantine or uh, illness. Um, I'm being okay right now. Hopefully, it continues to be like that. Uh, the, the state of Israel is going under some um, very serious, um, l let's say, I w would even say unprecedented actions. Uh, so they decided to shut down the whole um, uh, school system. So all of the kids are basically not going anywhere. Uh, lots of uh, places have been shut down. Like a lot of people uh, kind of are in a forced vacation. Uh, restaurants are closed, um, malls, you know, all of those places are being closed down. Any kind of uh, places that is potentially very crowded, they made it kind of, uh, they made it illegal to open it until the the whole thing uh, kind of uh, goes away. Other than that, I've been super duper busy in the last couple of weeks, months actually. In general, I'm feeling I'm always have this feeling like I'm 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 working a bit too much and d doesn't have enough time to dedicate to you guys to my YouTube channel, which I we, it's really close to my heart. I mean, I do want to I do want to give it the attention that it requires, but not always have the option to. Uh, so hopefully, this. Uh, uh, the Rona thing that we have right now maybe will give me uh, some some opportunity to actually <laughs> do this uh, more often, maybe to record some videos uh, in advance and work on some other projects that I did, didn't have really time to do in my, let's say, normal life routine. So perhaps, perhaps now it actually would be it actually would be possible. So who knows? Maybe all of this is actually for the better. So without further ado, let's find an opponent here on Lee Chess. So uh, because I know you guys love so much uh, those longer time control games, let's actually pick up this guy, 20 plus zero. I hope nobody took that game. I'll wait for a couple of seconds. Yeah, somebody took it. You see, this is a, uh, this is uh, this is my luck. But okay, let's. Uh, I'll just. Um, what do you say? Ten plus zero. Let's try ten plus zero. I'll take uh, a time control which is not slow enough, not quick enough, just enough time to kind of uh, talk through the moves a little bit. Hope that uh, the chess. Uh, world is going okay with everybody increasing their ratings so it might take a while to find a 10 plus zero game because it's not a very it's not a very popular time control as you know lots of people like to play uh, either blitz or bullet 30 plus zero but it's a 1641 opponent it might be a little bit too low I'm hoping at least maybe a 2,000 opponent can be can be good enough. Let's try maybe pl 5 plus 3. Maybe somebody will pick it up. 
it's uh, it's not very slow, like it's considered to be uh, 15 plus 0, ah, almost took it. I almost took a 15 plus 0, but then it went away. 18 plus 8, okay, let's try 18 plus 8, whatever this is. So this is um, uh, 2068, 2068 rating opponent. I'll make my first, actually let's do d4, you know what? I decided that enough e4, I've been playing e4 throughout my whole life, maybe not giving enough attention to the d4 opening since I've never really studied them very well as white. I did play occasionally d4 as white, but uh, probably not enough. I mean, it's very important for chess players, especially if you want to become very strong to be able to play both e4 and d4. So he plays the so-called Queen's Gambit Declined. I can play Knight c3, I can play Knight f3. I'm not an expert in any of those, so I'll just intuitively uh, try to play the Catalan, just because I do play with the black pieces some openings involving putting your bishop on the long diagonal, like the Grunfeld, for example. So I feel like playing the Catalan, putting the bishop on g2, and trying to aim at some pressure on the long diagonal, is kind of uh, being a little bit similar or as much similar as you can be to the Grunfeld. So this guy takes on c4, this is a normal move. So white can always try to get the spawn back in, in basically in various ways. I've seen people play knight a3 here, I have seen people play knight e5 trying to take the pawn on c4. Let's try, let's try knight a3, I want to see how does he react. So the threat is super simple. The main question of course is what happens if black just takes the knight on a3, which is, uh, which is possible. I don't see anything wrong with that move. After which I can just take back if I want, but also another option, interesting option is to play queen a4 check, it kind of taking advantage um, of the fact that black didn't castle yet and then take with the queen on a3 and what is nice about this is that you also kind of stopping black from castling so I kinda I kinda like this idea I'm, I'm really wondering if black will will take on a3 or not, because if he doesn't take on a3, so basically if he doesn't do that move, I will just take back on c4, and I, th and I feel like white will be very comfortable. Yeah, c6, the move that he did is a little bit passive, I don't like it too much, now I can just take back on c4 without any problems. So you can see that in those type of Catalan positions, white always has this kind of um, very stable advantage of having this bishop very active versus this bishop on c8, which is always a pretty bad piece that is difficult to kind of get developed into the game. So I'm castling. So black has this very serious problem to solve, this bishop on c8. It's not so easy for him to to actually move it, since if at any point he plays a move like b6, then like immediately weakens the long diagonal, which I can exploit for, for my bishop. So he castles. And now I need to kind of figure how do I want to finish my development. I'm thinking b3, bishop b2, playing for a double fianchetto. Looks very solid, I'll just play it. So the next, the next moves might look like this, so bishop on b2, I might put my rook on c1 on the half open foul to exert some pressure there, and this move knight b6 I want to address because as you can see black is extremely cramped in his position, so what I'm going to do now is not exchange on b6, which would be a bad move, I would go knight e5, I don't want to exchange pieces, since I feel like exchanging pieces in general should favor black in this position because he is more cramped and when you have a cramped position 
In general, it's good for you to exchange lots of pieces in order to kind of untangle your position a little bit and allow the rest of your pieces to be developed properly. So, this knight on b6, as you can see, is not a very effective piece right now because he's being completely um, kind of uh, being completely. How do you say this? Like, uh. <laughs> being uh, kind of limited in his movements by the pawn on b3. And now, after knight d7, can you guess what is the move that I'm going to make here? If you guessed that I will take on d7, you would be wrong, because as we said earlier, we don't want to exchange pieces. So I must move knight d3. I feel like this is the correct move. So you see, we actually play a little bit a game of cat and mouse there kind of he wants to exchange I'm not allowing him to do so so he plays bishop f6 which is sensible he puts the bishop on the long diagonal eyeballing my rook on c1 and now I'm thinking whether I should play bishop b2 and my other candidate move is bishop a3 which is also nice because I gain a tempo against his rook on, a, on f8 Let's try bishop a3, should be okay. Very likely he would go rook e8. And I would very likely go rook c1. Because I really want to get my rook out of this potential um, discovered attack against my rook. Also, if he plays bishop e7, I might exchange the bishops because I feel like yeah, this bishop, if you, if you see, this is his good bishop. The bishop on e7 is actually a fairly good piece in contrast to the bishop on c8, which is a very, very bad piece. But my instincts tell me not to exchange and still go bishop b2, kind of being very true to the concept of not exchanging pieces when you have more space. So you see, our strategy is really involved around um, keep his, keeping his position very cramped while improving our own position. Once again, my next couple of moves might be something like rook c1, maybe moving the queen away, and maybe putting my other rook on d1. This looks to me like a very sensible plan. What black is about to do, I'm really not sure, because um, obviously he wants to, to develop, he wants to get this bishop into the game, but as you can see, it's extremely hard. Maybe pushing that a pawn, a5, a4, something like that, but even, even then, like if he goes a5, I immediately go a4, stopping all kinds of counterplay on the queen side, so... I don't see too much uh, merit in doing that. Now, what about... What about pushing c5? Are we intimidated by that? Well, first of all, what is nice about the move c5, from white's perspective, is that this bishop on g2 immediately becomes much more active because you have an access to the whole diagonal. So I'm not I'm not unhappy about him playing c5. I would assume that e5 would be a good pawn break for him, but it's so much difficult to achieve. I have lots and lots of control over the square on e5. So I'm assuming black will basically will never be able to push e5. Uh, definitely not without very serious uh, concessions. So, I, you know what, I would even assume that if you put this position into an engine, and you can check me, because I sometimes, I kind of like, I kind of like to see sometimes whether I can match the engine's evaluation of a certain position. So, I would assume that if you put this position into an engine, it will give you a number somewhere around 1.5 p 
plus 1.5 for white, of course, and uh, maybe even more, maybe even plus 2, some, 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 somewhere in this kind of uh, rating, uh, somewhere around this range, because as you can see, black is really lacking basically counterplay, he doesn't have too much to play with. My opponent takes a lot of time to think. H6. Yeah, this is a move which kind of screams. I don't really know. I don't know really what to do. So I'm just, you know, making a loop for my king. It's a semi useful move, but definitely a move which is not really helping black in terms of um, untangling his position in any way. Yeah, I think any move is good for white. I can play e4, seizing the center, rook c1, queen c2. Basically any move looks good to be honest. I feel like going e4, but let's make maybe one last preparatory move. Rook c1. First of all now, stopping the move c5 altogether forever basically, so there's not even an option to go c5 anymore, which is nice. And once again, in my next moves, I either will move my queen away, fall by rook d1. Yeah, so he plays f5, this is a... Uh, I mean, I, I can understand my opponent, I mean, he, he is... Uh, he doesn't really have uh, any kind of play and he wants to, f he doesn't want to just, he doesn't want to get kind of slowly kind of outplayed by white, so he wants to make a move that feels like he's giving him some counterplay. But it's a super weakening move, I feel like I'm going to play knight f4 now, exploiting that kind of newly created weakness on e6. I think knight f6 is now forced, because he needs to defend the pawn on e6. After which, I would like to perhaps put in my other knight on e5. Perhaps aiming at that also weakened square on h6. So I really think that if black wanted to play the move f5, he should have probably avoided the move h6. Because as you can see right now, the fact that I have an access, like an immediate access to the square on h6 is a little bit annoying uh, for black because if my knight gets to g6 his rook would be under attack. Okay, knight b8, that's a, that's a very unfortunate move to make. I almost can feel the pain of his by making this move. I'll just go knight e5, look at those knights comparing those knights on b6 and b8 just uncomparable actually because he weakened his king so much my next move is definitely going to be e4 I want to open up the center of the board this will help me with my whole plan of uh, exploiting his king side weaknesses and my king side attack should be extremely strong here because almost all of his pieces are kind of concentrated on the queen side of the board so they cannot really assist the king in case that he's kind of getting under attack queen e8 all right i don't see any reason not to go e4 so i'll do it yep black is in very serious troubles here i would assume if you put this position into an engine, it will already be much more than plus 2, maybe somewhere between plus 3 and plus 4. And don't forget that white is not really having any material advantage yet, so having a... Maybe I'm exaggerating actually. It's, it's definitely over 2, but uh, I don't know exactly how, how much. And 97... Is that a tactical mistake? So if I want, I have this pawn hanging, but then we need to calculate because he takes my knight on e5 
and then uh, he has a discovered attack against my knight, but then I also take his rook. But then my knight is kind of trapped on f8, and I might not be able to get it out in, out in time. There must be some kind of tactic here, I just feel it. Knight g6 is probably also very strong. I, I, I think that's what I will do. Let's just do knight g6. Getting a tempo against this rook. Yeah, and after this move... I just wanted to take on f5, actually. With the idea that if he takes back... I can play the simple move rook e1. Putting some pressure against his pieces on the e file. And yeah, I think black is um, actually just losing very quickly here. If he takes with a rook on f5, then I can choose between just the simple move rook e1, continuing to increase pressure against the square on e6. Or another very good option would be bishop h3. With a, with a nice skewer against the rook and the pawn. The black is completely lost here, no doubt. The only, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe the only thing that is, that is kind of might be um, not fully perfect for white is the fact that he that he couldn't play the move d5 a move ago which could be really nice and then all of his pieces could get into the attack but who knows i mean if he for example takes on f5 and i play rook e1 then my bishop might have gotten on a3 knight of eight feels like a, a very desperate move and probably it is a desperate move. How do I exploit? Okay, first of all, I already won one pawn for for almost nothing. I think I'll take the bishop, not the knight. The bishop, the position is about to be kind of opened up, so I should prefer uh, keeping my bishops and taking his his own bishops, since in general when you play open type games uh, the bishops are in general superior to the knights so I can just take on e6 if I want but this kind of helps him to develop the rest of his pieces which I don't really want to do I'm thinking whether I can just go d5, a very straightforward move, opening up the diagonal. I mean, it looks good, and it should be. It should it should be a good move. Uh, I guess I'll do it. Once again, there are probably many different ways to win this position, but d5 looks like a like a fairly fairly straightforward way so his rook is under attack now I'm assuming he will take on f5 at this point and then then I can if I want to once again regain my material advantage I can take on c6 or if I want to be even more ambitious than that I can play d6 creating already a fairly dangerous passed pawn aiming to kind of disrupt a little bit black's coordination so should I go d6 or just take on c6 I mean on, on principle I think I'm not supposed to take on c6 because then he takes back and his bishop suddenly can at, at least he can get out of its cage kind of even though I am I am having Still a pawn up with a very nice position. And this X also looks very tempting. I think it's one of those positions that almost any move that you will do 
will be good and all you need to do is just basically just choose I mean maybe not spend too much time thinking about it because if you spend too much time then you might get into time trouble and really the only thing that can go wrong for white in in this kind of position which is so good is that you know he will mess up the time so let me take on c6 I, I mean I guess there were more accurate ways of of, of uh, moving on there but from my experience when you have a very good position like this you want to minimize the amount of uh, energy that you consume uh, in the whole process of winning your game you should just be very straightforward play quick make practical decisions even though maybe there are slightly better options but in general if you keep your control you should be okay now I can take the pawn on c6 with the bishop but then then he kind of gets developed and you know what I really don't want him to get developed so I'll play rook e1 at the moment the material is is even is equal but just look at the amount of weaknesses that black has in his position almost all of his pawns can be targeted as the weaknesses the pawn on e6 is isolated the pawn on c6 is isolated the pawn on g7 is under some pressure I already have some ideas of playing queen g4 and attacking his king at some point point. and white's position is very solid there are basically no weaknesses in my camp no weak pawns and look at those bishops kind of making this kind of crossfire across the board so bishop d7 was played this is uh, this is the first time that this bishop even moves in this game he wants to he wants to get ready to develop his rook into the game and now once again, if I want, the easiest is just to take on c6, winning a pawn. Not even, black doesn't even have too much compensation for that. Or if you want to play even more ambitiously, you can just ignore the pawn and do other things. Like getting your queen activated. Queen g4, queen c2, these kind of moves might also be very good. I'm actually not even sure what... What should I prefer? Once again, just because everything everything looks so good. Queen c2 creates the threat of queen takes rook on f5. I'm kind of wondering how how exactly would he react to this move? Let's let's go queen c2. Once again, I'm a hundred percent sure that I have many, many, many good moves, and I'm probably not playing the most accurate moves right now. But I kind of like the whole idea of not taking material, but keeping the control, keeping the keeping your opponent uncomfortable. Because, you know, I, I could have won a pawn on the previous move, let's be honest. Bishop takes c6 would be the easiest move. But then, you, first of all, you exchange this very bad bishop on d7. His rook gets into the game with a tempo. At least he, he manages to mobilize his pieces. Well, in this position, I it's very hard to me to imagine how exactly, for example, the rook on a8 will become, like, any active in this game at all. So, yeah, rook c8, this is just a blunder. I'm going to take on f5 and he would very likely resign. He missed probably the fact that his rook is, uh, is, uh, is not really being defended properly. I would be very surprised if he's not resigning here. Because losing a full rook... Plus, already having a bad position is uh, 
is quite enough to win the game. So in the meanwhile, until he decides his mind, uh, I want to wanted to address that uh, very soon, probably a couple of maybe days or weeks from now, there is going to be a new course by me uh, released. I'm I created uh, a new video course about uh, the great games of Anatoly Karpov. I did it with collaboration of the Remote Chess Academy. I'll keep you updated about how um, how this uh, kind of uh, is um, how this is moving around, but it's going it's, it's it's going to be mainly focusing about his different strategies in his games, uh, all of his defensive strategies, the prophylaxis, thinking about your opponent's plans, playing playing against your opponent's pieces, restricting them, all of those themes that were so popular uh, in Karpov's games. Yeah. So the opponent still uh, still is not resigning. I mean, if uh, if you if you see that your opponent is not resigning, in uh, yeah he resigned finally. But I wanted to say that if you see that your opponent is not resigning, uh, not resigning on time, kind of, uh, then you should um, I, I I don't know. I mean, for people who just wait with the resignation until their time runs out, it sometimes happens. It's extremely annoying. I mean, if you play a bullet or a blitz game and it and it oh and it's it's being over in one minute, that's one thing. But when you play like a, this kind of long time control, it's it could be really annoying. So um, let's go just very briefly through this game. In this position, in the opening, I think uh, a very critical move was bishop takes a3. I don't know if you can see the engine's evaluation here, but this is his best move. He played c6, and you see, already now, the engine says that white is having a plus one advantage just by playing that very passive move c6. And, uh, you know, from this point onwards, black's position is already super unpleasant, in my opinion. And it never really gotten, it's it, it never really gotten any better. Yeah, rook c1. I think I played uh, fairly sensible moves, and uh, yeah, I, I think my evaluations were pretty accurate. Uh, yeah, and by this point, yeah, it's already you know plus three and maybe even more. So uh, yeah, it was a uh, and yeah, and d5 is the best move also here by the engine, which is nice to know. And you see, even the engine doesn't want to take on b7 and c6. So maybe I had the correct feeling about the position. I played rook e1, which is one of his best moves. And in this position, you see, I I hope you can see. Also, he doesn't want to take on c6. He wants to play bishop e4. But I'm pretty sure he would like my move as well. Queen c2. Yeah, he doesn't like it as much, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a very bad position for black. So um, really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't too long, and I will definitely see you guys very soon uh, after the whole uh, Rona thing. Please don't forget uh, to leave a comment about this game about this video. Tell me if you feel well, if you didn't get any uh, viruses into your body. Um, leave a like, it really helps me to be promoted in the YouTube algorithm. And of course, subscribe and share this video if you find it useful. And without any further ado, I will see you guys next time.